everyone! My name's Eleanor and I'm a second year student studying zoology at Derby University. I have this massive dream to one day become a primatologist and to help me achieve this dream I've been getting involved in the fine seminars and the discussions to learn more about social evolution. So one of the amazing talks that I went to the other day was by Susan Perry. Now Susan Perry and her colleagues have done this long term study and by long term I mean 31 years on white faced capunchies in the wild. These are a new world primate that have relatively large brains to their body size. They have really interesting tool use and really bizarre but interesting social rituals that I will talk a bit more about later on. So Susan Perry found that characteristics actually affect the learning strategies of an individual in a white faced capunchi population. So older individuals are less opportunistic, less playful less active, less curious and this meant that when they found a learning strategy that they liked they would stick with it, they would stick with the habit. It doesn't matter if there's better ones out there, they would stick with the habit. Younger individuals that are more curious, more active, more playful, they have a bit more of a problem solving mindset where they will try more things and they're more open to trying more strategies. She also found that there is a lot of observing behaviour in the population so younger individuals will observe older individuals to learn more about the learning strategies. So overall she found that these learning strategies develop and change through a life cycle for white faced capunchi. So from being a newborn to being a grandparent these learning strategies change and that's partially because personality traits change or the opportunity to observe an individual arises whereas other individuals might not have those opportunities to observe. As the age changes as well that affects the learning strategy. So now that I've spoken about the learning strategy evidence and data that she found, let's cover innovations because these are really strange. So some innovations relate to foraging. Now these are interesting. So this is where a individual find a new way to process food or process drink. So they might scoot their bum up to a tree and stick the tail in and this will get the tail a little bit wet because it's like a hole in the tree. And then they suck the tail and they found a way to process water or it might be investigative innovations or self-soothing innovations. But where it gets strange is the social innovations. This can involve eye poking behavior where two individuals will poke each other in the eye really deep into the socket. Or it can involve sucking each other's body parts such as sucking each other's ears or hand sniffing behaviors. Now these are seemingly weird, strange behaviors, but Susan Perry and her colleagues actually found that they have an adaptive mechanism. So individuals that have an unclear relationship are more likely to perform social innovations. This is, in a way, a risk and discomfort behaviour to test the social bonds between each other. So there's definitely a relationship there, but it's a bit iffy. So they perform these social rituals to test the bond, to test the strength of the bond. If this study was short term and wasn't as long as it is, maybe Susan Perry wouldn't have found the adaptive value of these innovations or maybe she wouldn't have found how personality affects learning strategies and also affects innovations because those that are more social perform social innovations more. Those that are less social perform investigative or self-soothing innovations more. So it all intertwines and that just shows the value of long-term studies. I'm really interested to see what else Susan Perry does with the, this research. For instance, if personality affects the social networks of these white faced communities, and I'm interested to see more contributions that she gives to the social evolution and cultural dynamic and evolution research.